Jimmy Kimmel has endured a lot of psychological bumps and bruises along the way to becoming the king of late night. From personal problems to professional failures, here are some of the most harrowing things to ever happen to him. Unlike some of his late night talk show brethren, Kimmel didn't start his professional life as a comedian. Instead, he worked in radio. At the age of 16, he landed a gig with a Sunday night interview program on a college radio station. While he was attending Arizona State University in the late 80s, he landed his first paid radio gig at a station in Phoenix, which he took on full-time after he got married. Radio can be an itinerant feast or famine profession. Downsizing, format changes, and moving to where the jobs are are all constant threats to job stability. About a year after Kimmel started working for that Phoenix station, the entire staff was laid off, so he jumped to another job in Seattle, Washington. He got fired from that gig after less than a year, and the same thing happened with his next job at a station in Tampa, Florida. There were good reasons for my termination. Like what? I would tape my boss in our meetings and then play them back on the air the next day. Oh my gosh, that's a <laughs> great <laughs> idea! Kimmel then landed a spot in Palm Springs, California, and proved so popular that a larger station in Tucson, Arizona lured him away, only to let him go after 11 months. After all that hardship, he finally found lasting radio success at K-Rock in Los Angeles, which led to his career-making TV gigs. After enrolling at Arizona State, Kimmel met a young woman named Gina Maddie. In quick order, she became his first girlfriend ever, and soon after that, they got married. At the time of their wedding in 1988, Kimmel was only 20 years old, as he explained to Huffington Post. We were both very young. My mom was 19 when she got married, so it didn't seem unusual to me. It seemed unusual to all my friends, but not to me. By 1993, the Kimmels had two children, a daughter named Katie and a son named Kevin. They separated in April 2003, and then Gina filed for divorce in June of that year after she tired of her husband's workaholic tendencies. After working the early morning shift at K-Rock, he would then commute to Comedy Central and put in another full-time shift as host of Win Ben Stein's Money. Not only did the stress and financial worry over moving around from job to job strain the marriage, but so did Kimmel never being around or having much of himself to offer his family after he became successful. Kimmel wasn't ABC's first choice as it entered the late night game. Attempts to lure David Letterman and Jon Stewart in 2002 proved unsuccessful, so the network took a chance on Kimmel, who was then hosting Comedy Central's The Man Show. That relative obscurity contributed to the early, rocky run of Jimmy Kimmel Live. Most late-night shows are recorded earlier in the day before they air, but the early episodes of Jimmy Kimmel Live actually were live, so any mishaps couldn't be edited out. And in those initial weeks, there were bad moves aplenty. On the very first episode, guest co-host Snoop Dogg kept censors on their toes as he flashed a middle finger three times. Two days after the show's debut, the network revoked its liquor license. The set had featured a bar where the studio audience could acquire boozy drinks. But then one woman drank too much and vomited on her chair, very close to a network executive. The reviews weren't great either, with The Hollywood Reporter noting, It's been reported that Kimmel has a budget for writers, but nothing in the premiere indicated any had been hired. Turning out a show every night, sometimes without much of anything planned, took a toll. In 2015, Kimmel told the South by Southwest panel that he hoped for a cancellation that first year. As he put it, I was burnt out, exhausted, terrified. I wanted them to cancel it so I didn't have to quit. On April 21st, 2017, Kimmel and his wife, comedy writer Molly McNearney, welcomed their second child, a baby boy named William John. But what was a happy and wondrous event soon turned into a nightmare. A problem became clear just a few hours after William was born. A pediatric nurse identified a heart murmur in the newborn, along with a slight purple tint to his skin. A team of doctors and nurses determined that William didn't have enough oxygen in his blood. That suggested something wasn't right in either his lungs or his heart. Neonatal staff eventually pinpointed the issues, a blocked pulmonary valve and a hole in the interior wall of his heart. At just three days old, William had to undergo open-heart surgery. And the operation was a success. It was the longest three hours of my life. Baby William made it through the surgery, along with a second surgery seven months later. On April 21st, 2019, Kimmel marked the very happy occasion of his healthy son's second birthday on Instagram, along with the caption, We are grateful always to the nurses and doctors at Cedar sinai 
and Children's LA who saved his life, and all of you who prayed and sent positive thoughts our way. Part of what has made Jimmy Kim Alive so different from its slickly produced competition is its folksy, let's put on a show vibe. That has a lot to do with Kimmel stocking his staff with close friends and family members. For many years, the show's sidekick role was filled by the white-haired security guard, Uncle Frank. That's not just a nickname befitting the gregarious Frank, as he was actually Kimmel's uncle. Frank Potenza was a veteran of the Korean War who worked as a police officer for 20 years along with stints doing security in Las Vegas and at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. In August 2011, his eight-year tenure as the most authentic presence in late night came to a sad and abrupt end when he died of cancer at the age of 77. His passing happened while the show was on hiatus, and on the first episode back, the host delivered a tearful monologue in which he eulogized his uncle. Uncle Frank loved being a part of this show. And I want to say thanks to my co-workers who talked to him and visited him. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.